The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche posits a striking and plausible claim that socialism and Christianity are intricately linked, with remarkable parallels and common underlying themes. In Nietzsche's view, the two ideologies share a lineage deeply rooted in human nature and social dynamics. He argues that both systems, despite their apparent differences, stem from a shared psychological foundation and address similar human needs. Nietzsche's analysis begins with an examination of the populations that these ideologies tend to attract. He asserts that both Christianity and socialism tend to thrive among those he characterizes as the lower classes. The sick, weak, outcasts, condemned, sinners, prostitutes, the poor, the unfortunate, and individuals he dubs the most stupid folks. In his view, these groups are drawn to these ideologies due to a variety of factors, including a desire for hope, solace, and a sense of belonging. One of the key commonalities Nietzsche identifies is a shared animosity, particularly directed at the higher classes of society. Both Christianity and socialism, he argues, harbor resentment and even hatred for the wealthy, strong, healthy, fortunate, the ruling class, and the learned or wise. This antipathy towards those who enjoy social advantages forms a foundational aspect of both ideologies, which Nietzsche believes is rooted in the psychology of the lower classes. The striking parallels do not end there. Nietzsche delves into the core principles and motivations that underpin these two seemingly divergent belief systems. He argues that, much like a Christian who condemns and disapproves of the real world as a source of suffering and corruption, a socialist directs their discontent towards those who wield greater political, cultural, or religious power. In essence, both systems seek to alleviate suffering and discontent by condemning external forces and attributing their grievances to external agents. In the case of socialism, Nietzsche points out that this condemnation is often focused on the wealthy, powerful, healthy, and fortunate individuals. Socialists invest significant energy in criticizing those who possess qualities they lack. Nietzsche argues that this pervasive need to criticize and condemn others, often driven by feelings of inferiority, is a shared psychological thread between Christianity and socialism. Both Christianity and socialism also emphasize ideals of revolution, the abolition of slavery, equality, justice, love of peace, philanthropy, and altruism. Nietzsche thinks that they are just fancy words and that they are often unattainable in practice, and such utopian visions may not be realistic. Nietzsche's criticism, therefore, centers on the gap between idealistic rhetoric and the challenging realities of implementation. To Nietzsche, the central psychological driving force of Christians is ressentiment, a term he uses to describe feelings of resentment and envy harbored by the underprivileged. These feelings lead to a desire for a social uprising or revolt against those who hold power. Christianity, as Nietzsche sees it, promotes love and devalues self-affirmation, emphasizing qualities such as patience, helpfulness, endurance, and cooperation in both words and deeds. At the same time, it deifies a life of subjugation, suffering, poverty, and sickness under the guise of love, humility, kindness, and obedience. Nietzsche's argument is that these aspects of Christianity are mirrored in socialist doctrine. He suggests that the condemnation of the fortunate and the emphasis on love and altruism serve as key underpinnings for both systems. This parallelism, he argues, raises fundamental questions about the origins of these ideologies and the psychological factors that drive them. A significant point of convergence between Christianity and socialism is their shared desire for power and a rejection of the existing social order. Nietzsche traces a common pattern. First, the oppressed envision themselves as free individuals who recognize one another and unite to demand equality, justice, and freedom. However, this initial stage often escalates into more ambitious demands. After securing some degree of political representation and influence through priests in the case of Christianity and leaders in the case of socialism, the next step is often to seek exclusive power. We can see that this pattern played out in various socialist movements of the 20th century. The evolution from seeking basic rights and representation to pursuing exclusive power is an aspect of socialist revolutions that Nietzsche considers to be rooted in human psychology, shared between both Christianity and socialism. As Nietzsche sees it, three distinct elements are involved in this progression. The oppressed, 
the mediocre, and the discontented and sick. The oppressed individuals, according to Nietzsche, fight against political nobility and its ideal. The mediocre, on the other hand, engage in a struggle against the spiritually and physically privileged. Meanwhile, the discontented and sick individuals oppose the happy and healthy elements of society. After achieving success, the mediocre tend to come to the forefront. After they win this battle, both Christians and socialists, Nietzsche asserts, ultimately aim to win over the happy, healthy, wealthy, powerful, and strong individuals to their side. This entails valuing the mediocre for their influence and utilizing their voices and opinions in shaping society, politics, and religion. Nietzsche concludes that when Christianity is made practical and natural, it can lead to the emergence of socialism and democracy, both of which depend heavily on the influence of the mediocre. Nietzsche sees this as the evolution of Christian ideals and principles, manifesting in contemporary ideologies that draw upon the same psychological foundations. In examining the nature of revolutions, Nietzsche refutes the idea that they are driven by youthful and naive individuals rising against the established cultural order. Instead, he proposes that these uprisings often represent a form of decadence, a consequence of moral hypersensitivity and hysteria within a weary and aimless populace. Thus, the prevalence of both Christianity and socialism among the lower classes may be attributed to a sense of moral hypersensitivity and restlessness within these groups. Christianity and socialism both share a fundamental psychological drive, the desire to revolt against ruling spiritual power. These ideologies advocate virtues that lead to happiness among the lowly, emphasizing the importance of refraining from war and resistance, and prioritizing obedience, love of neighbors, kindness, helpfulness, and charity. In the case of socialism, this translates into a focus on the law and constitution, designed to enhance the lives of the most impoverished and underprivileged. One of the notable features of Christian gospel, Nietzsche notes, is the claim that the gateway to heaven and happiness is open to the poor, underprivileged, and lowly. The precondition is that they must free themselves from various societal institutions, traditions, cultures, religions, property, gain, rank, status, state, police, education, art, and the army. This concept, he asserts, is echoed in socialist doctrine. Nietzsche thinks that both Christianity and socialism, in the name of happiness, freedom, equality, and social justice, often bring more suffering to people in practice. Furthermore, Nietzsche examines the concept of equal rights. He suggests that the notion of equal souls before God led to the development of theories and concepts promoting equal rights, justice, opportunity, and equality in all aspects of life. These ideas, he claims, were first conceived and then firmly established in Christian societies and countries. Another significant psychological underpinning shared by both Christianity and socialism is a sense of self-preservation. Nietzsche argues that Christians believe they can endure their sickness and inadequacies by attributing them to others, often driven by revenge and resentment. Similarly, socialists, anarchists, and nihilists seek reasons for their poverty and lowly status in society, politics, and the nation. This led to the development of theories aimed at changing the structure of society, politics, and the state to improve their lives. Nietzsche thinks the altruistic mode of valuation, common to both Christianity and socialism, results from feelings of impotence and a lack of powerful affirmations. To him, this mode of judgment, whether religious or moral, is symptomatic of a lowly culture. For instance, the Christian sinner interprets to justify their lack of power and self-confidence, leading to a sense of guilt, which Nietzsche interprets as a sign of decadence. Finally, another shared element between Christianity and socialism is the revulsion toward egoism. While Christians despise their own egoism, socialists hate the egoism of others. Both sentiments, Nietzsche argues, are rooted in the instinct of revenge, especially among the weak. In response, they act prudently to preserve themselves by promoting cooperation and solidarity as a means of self-preservation. The rejection of egoism, whether one's own or others, and the promotion of altruism are recurring themes in socialist ideologies and Christianity.